November Metaspeed Sky Plus in hand. What a treat to be able to test these out early. Certainly a looker in this Brazil or Oregon colorway. Danger, danger, high voltage, emergency vibes here. How does it hold up against the V1? Let's get to it. Thanks for joining me here on the channel, it's always appreciated. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, but also click the bell below for notifications when we launch the new videos for you. I think Cheeks to 777 is probably the overall master of getting the gold first comments, but there are quite a few notable viewers there with very quick mouse clicking fingers. Mouse click, yeah. Does anyone click the mouse like that? Maybe. Also give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies, it really helps out. Muchas gracias. The ASICS Metaspeed Sky Plus here. These have been sent over to me by ASICS for testing without vetting my views or viewing my videos before my valued viewers. I managed to say that first time. They're not paying me to make this video or anything. I'm just waxing lyrical about the shoe. 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 Stats wise, these come in at a cool 236 grams or 8.32 ounces in my UK size 10.5. That's a US 11.5 if you want to know that sort of thing. It fits pretty much as per the V1 in length at about 28.5 centimeters. I had to stuff loads of paper into the shoe to get it to sort of stay upright. It's very, very flexible, this upper. I would suggest the curve to the footbed is a little bit to do with why the shoe feels perhaps short to some people. I think that coupled with the drop together makes the shoe feel perhaps more snug than it actually is. That doesn't mean to say that many of you will perhaps want to go a half size up, perhaps from your typical A6 size. It's pretty much spot on as per the V1 though. So if you like that shoe in a certain size, I say go for it again in this one. I'm measuring about 44 millimeters in the heel here in my 10 and a half and approximately 39.5 millimeters in the forefoot. I think it's probably about a five mil drop. So I think we have about four millimeters extra heel stack back here in the rear of the shoe. We have to take into account here that my measurements on the V1 are after 100 miles they're going to have compressed a little bit there definitely seems to be a bit of compression back there in the heel which you would expect this foam is very very compressive asics are quoting the drop has to be five millimeters as per the v1 and my figures pretty much concur with that we will start with the upper first the same mesh as per the v1 though i would suggest that that tongue is a little softer just like beasts fur the tongue is now also full of vent holes as well, which could help out in terms of breathability. Quite a bit thinner than the V1 actually, very floppy. It feels like something you could have purchased at Hobbycraft. Obviously we have those perforated laces here now, which seem to be the real fad right now in a lot of the race shoes. They actually work a treat in this one and enable you to dial in the fit a little better than my favored waxy laces in the V1. So sorry waxy laces, but you're 2001's hit. These are my new personal favorites. I'm going to put these perforated laces into all of my shoes, including the Jordan 1's, the 3's, the 4's, 5's. Yeah. You kept my drift right. Perhaps they save a gram or two in terms of weight. I don't know. They're certainly working a treat though in terms of achieving a good lockdown and a more appropriate in length. I had much less excess lace here when utilizing a runner's knot in the Metaspeed Sky Plus. They do appear to work as an upgrade and it's an improvement over the V1, so good job ASICs. You will need to spend some time smoothing out the tongue though before you lace these up. You imagine that it's a new kitten and you're just sort of caressing it very gently like that over the top of the foot. The upper in the V1 was somewhat coarse, we're just going to test out this one here. It's the same. Mesh is breathable as before though, it's been very warm here in Yeovil. I think there's a couple of melted garden chairs outside. I always find a 5k is a really good test of the upper of a shoe. A comfort test, can you just cinch the laces up and hammer it? Well yes, that's pretty much what I did out the box. And they felt fantastic, no issues with the lockdown of the shoe at all. Not any rubbing or any pressure points anywhere. For me, actually the upper is an improvement over the original version. Perfect for racing and that's pretty much what this shoe is really aimed for. Perhaps you could save it for some more premium training sessions too. Sizing still perhaps a little odd for some people, but for me, now I know which one works, it's a winner. I'll give this a 2.9 out of 3 for the upper after my initial runs. Midsole. 
Midsole. Midsole now. Midsole wise, we have a more built up side wall to the shoe here. Kind of cups your foot in, mainly at the mid to forefoot area of the midsole too. You do get this odd feeling that there's actually more foam in the forefoot than there is in the heel of the shoe. It's an illusion though. But some of the extra foam that we have here in the Metaspeed Sky Plus is in the mid to forefoot of the shoe. It presents a more guided, almost cup sole feel when compared to the V1. Certainly noticeable around the arch of the shoe, but overall the Metaspeed Sky Plus feels a more stable shoe underfoot. I think the extra foam here must be accountable for the extra weight. I think it's about 10 grams more than the V1. But then again, we've got some weight saving methods in both the upper and the outsole. Brings the shoe in line really with the next percent original, which I think was about 235 grams, something like that. And of course it's a clear 25 grams lighter than the Adios Pro 2. I found the extra few millimeters of foam across the mid to forefoot actually very noticeable in this shoe. The extra width and that foam creates a very wide landing platform here. It impacts the stability of this shoe and really does increase that sweet spot for landing. It means you're spending less time concentrating on where your foot's landing, more time controlling other things like your breathing and your overall form, arm swing, everything else just gets a little bit more attention. The processor doesn't have to work quite so hard. And as I get older, the processor seems to need upgrading now. You can just concentrate on more aspects of your run. That's what I'm trying to say. On some uneven trading estate terrain, ground down and broken by many a freight vehicle, the shoe performed well, if not perhaps a little better than the V1. It just cups and guides the foot a little bit with the increased height of those side walls in the midsole. Kind of a reverse here of what happened with the Adios Pro, where it's that had some side walls to it in the first version, and they completely eliminated those in the version two. So Adidas going one way and Asics going the other. On my 5K, I encountered some reasonable elevation and the Metaspeed Sky Plus does help a little with those hills. That rigid plate and the very forgiving heel. Again, this is no p foam, it's not a Zoomax doppelganger, nor a Lightstrike Pro copy. Flight Foam Turbo is very much its own thing and a rebound-like material. You could say it is a softer version of Phylon, perhaps. I'm sure the midsole in this shoe is just going to get better and better over time. The more you use it, the more and more accustomed to it I seem to become. Though the more rebound-like nature and the responsive squash of this shoe works for me, I'm really keen to actually race in this one, and I will do so at the forthcoming Martok 10K. No doubts here, though, to me, we have an underfoot feel that's a little closer to the alpha fly perhaps by that i mean a wider midfoot area here and increased width to that landing platform it really is quite apparent and quite a big change from the v1 most of that extra foam is located in this area and for some runners that would be exactly what they hoped for though others will probably be left wondering if they really need that extra foam if the v1 worked incredibly well for them i think innovation is the key here they're trying to sort of push the envelope a little bit i'm going to give it a three out of three for the midsole it is absolute dynamite outsole now so small revisions here all which have a positive effect on the shoe on first glance there seems to be a similar depth to the rubber here in the mid to forefoot i think it's actually a little bit thicker than the v1 no issues there because the v1 showed hardly any wear whatsoever in that mid to forefoot area overall though there is less rubber here in the midfoot They've kind of reduced it back a little bit and stretched it out. I guess that's going to mean a little bit more aesthetic wear to the exposed midsole area. And the areas in the heel here do kind of come to a point slightly more than they did in the V1. Again, this may either excite you or worry you if you were a big fan of the original version of the shoe. I guess my worry here will be longer term durability and some people will be really put off by the fact that the foam is going to wear down in the heel. It's not a big deal to me. I think it's just going to happen. It's a running shoe. It's what it's designed to do. Just put it on and enjoy it. One thing to take note of here is at least that the rubber is raised up from the level of the midsole, not like in the New Balance shoe I tried out a little while back where it was sort of already below the level of the midsole material. So that's at least gonna save the midsole that's exposed here a little bit more. In operation, the grip on concrete and tarmac was out of this world. It's almost Jeff Goldblum fly-like. 
on new road especially it really grips to tarmac you feel connected with the surface under your foot just sort of sings almost as it hits the floor though if you're going to wear them indoors in the kitchen you're going to get a strange sort of inappropriate sound as you walk around in them just try it out when you get them and you'll understand what I mean. I don't know what ASICs put into this stuff, guys, but it really is grippy. It does also smell like a tire shop inside the shoe sanctuary right now. Yeah, it, it does literally smell like a tire. Same reservations, really, about the outsole here. It's going to wear in the heel a little bit, and if that bothers you, then... Okay, no wear or anything, and I think the grip's maybe a little bit better than the V1. I'm going to give it a 2.8 out of 3 for the outsole value now so value here retail price is 225 it's pretty high it's right up there though it is a hell of a lot lighter than the adidas adios pro 2 if the next percent isn't working for you because of that very pronounced arch area then the metaspeed sky plus could be for you i have to say also it's probably one of the most amazing looking shoes i've ever seen it really does look space age this one it looks the part the colours are on point. I think this one's going to be a shoe for those battle-hardened speedsters or maybe the inquisitive mid-packers. The Plus certainly adds lots more cushion here at the expense of a little bit of weight. It really is a propulsive shoe. I found it fantastic running in this at half marathon pace up through to 5k pace. I think if you're running a marathon, you're probably going to want to be running it fast to make the best use of this shoe. I have no major issues in the V1 outsole. They've improved it a little bit here in the V2 my pair of the originals felt great 100 miles and i see no reason why these won't either though you rarely see these shoes discounted these models are never on sale so i'd suggest when it does come out get in there quick people they tend to sell out quickly and these do appear to be one of the most rare super shoes just very few of them around even now so a careful and subtle update here to the metaspeed sky the plus add some extra foam there where it counts Plus, you've got some additional stability in this version of the shoe. I think that will grant it a little bit of a wider appeal to more runners out there. I'm going to give this a 2.8 out of 3 for value. I do think it's one of the best quality out-the-box shoes that I've tested out in a long time. Everything about it feels like there's some care gone into it. And believe you me, that hasn't been the case with certain models this year. If I've totaled the scores up correctly, that gives us an 11.5 out of 3 for the ASICS Metaspeed Sky Plus after my initial runs. Are you going to be picking this one up on release? I think it launches very, very soon, so keep your eyes peeled. I'm loving it, and I'm going to race in this one in a couple of 10Ks I've got coming up in June and July. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments, people. Musical interlude time. Today it comes from Chic. I've been digging back into this best of and it's fantastic. Dance, dance, dance is one of my favourites. It's got that real pumping, energised disco feel. And it also has the phrase yowza, 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 which is bizarre. I really enjoy it when Echo says what it's going to play because it always includes that part. Everybody dance and I want your love are favourites of mine as well. The one thing I really love about Chic, aside from the fantastic bass lines, the guitars and the drums, is those soaring string sections. They're so rich and full of emotion. It really does add an extra layer to the production. Where some disco music and dance music these days can sound so overproduced, this always sounds on point. It sounds natural. It sounds real. Like a load of people have got together and created it rather than just pressing buttons and things. I think that's got a little bit more to it. And I think explains the longevity of Sheik's music. I'm going to be rocking my Nile Rogers Strat at a gig I've got coming up this Friday. I'm going to be playing with the Dale Fender Band in Yeovil at a special Jubilee party celebration. I think we're on about six o'clock, so come on down and enjoy the music. I can't guarantee you any Alvin Stardust this time though. Go and put some Sheik on and dance around the room. It'll make you feel good. Okay, it's time for me to get my editing hat on. If you've enjoyed what you've seen today, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications. It really does help us out, cats. Give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.